this week on Ben Buster's bonus bushels, Dan and Amanda with Winfield are going to talk about the anatomy of a corn plant. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. So Amanda and I wanted to walk through kind of the anatomy of a corn plant from a late season perspective and things we can look for while we're walking fields. Right now. So we dug up a corn plant today. Um, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So this corn plant here, um, the first thing we're going to look at is root architecture. Ideally, we want our nodal roots to come down at a 45 degree angle. That indicates that there is no compaction, no a density layers that those, those roots are, are hitting as they're moving downward. That allows for free movement of water, both out of the profile and into the profile, depending on if water or if uh, weather is wet or dry, and also allows for maximum nutrient uptake. So we think about the root system of a corn plant. There are three root systems. We have the seedling roots, um, the seminal roots, and the nodal roots. So the primary root system for a corn plant are nodal roots. There are five rings of nodal roots. If you want to know typically what ring of nodal roots is out, you take your V stage and subtract one. So at V6, all five rings of nodal roots are out. Node three is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of water and nutrient uptake. So it's really important we keep these nodal roots both healthy um, and pointing in the right direction in terms of getting down into 45. Things we can do to keep them healthy. We talk about with cropland our Ford event plus seed treatment, the extra fungicide with an ethoboxum component really good against pythium helps to keep these healthy in, into late season so if you're looking at corn plants late season digging up roots make sure you see the 45 if not you may have some compaction issues out there that can be potentially remedied with tillage or other means um, another good thing to do here is see if you can find the seed a lot of times it'll still be attached to that mesocotyl um, you can gauge your seedling depth at that point to see if you were too deep too shallow if you take the length of that mesocotyl add three quarters of an inch that is your seedling depth Yep, a couple other things to look at when while you have these roots pulled up is, Griff kind of mentioned it earlier, the root architecture. Mohawk roots would signal that you had some sidewall compaction at planting time. And then if you had a very flat layer at the bottom of your plant and didn't have a lot of penetrating roots, that might be a hard pan that you might want to address with some deeper tillage. Right, so as we're moving up the corn plant, um, another thing to look for is crown rot. So at, at the crown of the plant, that would be kind of our bottom triangle here right in the nodes uh, that triangle if we see some blackness there that can be some crown rot the fungicide and the first part of the season that v5 application can help us work against that as well as hybrid ratings for various um, fungal diseases especially for some of those stock rots you can get those from your seed oil. moving up from your seeding depth you can also look at the growth stage so the bottom triangle part of the crown here there are th four nodes stacked together in that triangle then you can see a short gap and where that next line is, that's our next node and that's actually node five. So you can count nodes going up the plant from there to get the accurate growth stage late in the season. Our early season leaves, like that first thumb leaf, they often fall off by the time we get to V6. So it's really important to split your plants the later we get into the season to get an accurate growth stage. A couple notes here, the thumb leaf counts as a node. So a lot, some guys get a little confused on do I count the thumb leaf or not? That's that first rounded leaf. We absolutely count that as a node. This is also a great way if you're thinking about mid-season application. So like the back end of, that, of the glyphosate label, for example. This is the most accurate way to grow stage your corn plants when you start to see some of those bottom leaves senescing off. Okay, so moving up from the bottom of the plant, uh, we get to the nodes that are above the ground. And what can we see at each of those? Right, so immediately above the nodal roots, we'll start to see some brace roots develop. So these do take up water and nutrients from the very top layer of soil. Um, they also help obviously with standability on, on the corn plant, especially working late season. These will also help stand the plant back up if you do have a lodging event, especially in that early vegetative stage. Not, not so much late, but early vegetative, it can definitely help us stand up. So working up the stock, um, so this is obviously more the, the center of the stock, they kind of cut off the plant there. You'll start to see some nodes here and some ear shoots. So, this plant will put on ear shoots um, at the majority of the nodes kind of above those those brace roots. Um, these are all potential ears. What the plant will do, hormonally, it determines that, hey, I have enough nutrients and water to put on one primary ear. So usually that's what it does. Sometimes you will see two ears on a plant. Sometimes you will see three, especially if there's a lot of space between, um, between plants or you have a really light population. So... But most of these hybrids are conditioned to put on one single ear. We are, are staying more than put on multiples. But 
that's what each of these things are here. Those are potential ear shoots that have been aborted in order to have the corn plant put its focus on one primary ear. So the corn ear is actually the female flower of the corn plant. So we'll talk about tassels here in a second. The purpose of this obviously, when this thing is silking, is to catch the pollen that's coming out of the tassels, fertilize this, and help us make wool. And when we look at the ear of a corn plant, um, it's kind of like a history book. So if you take this ear off the plant, and we count rows around, that is actually set at V5. So if you have some ears that are affected in rows around, maybe they're narrower than what you normally see on your farm, that would indicate that you either had some stress or lack of nutrients or water at V5. The next thing you look at is how many kernels long is it? You even look at the aborted ones at the end. So this is your potential for length and that's set more around V9. So if you have beer can ears that are really girthy, but just not very long, um, that would be stress at the V9 growth stage. And again, that could be damage, it could be just environmental stress, it could be lack of nutrients, lack of water. And then the last thing to look at would be the tip back and the kernel depth. So if you have very shallow kernels, this is actually adding kernel depth all the way through the R stages until we get to black layers. So um, extra rainfall, making sure our nutrition is good late season, that can all contribute to kernel depth and making sure that these ears um, don't abort for kernels at the tip. That's great, Amanda. So this is this is our last opportunity before harvest to get a look in these fields, just check out some of these stress spots, maybe guided by NDVI or aerial image to see what these ears actually look like. I, I love the analogy of thinking about a corn ear as a history book. It'll tell us when the stress occurred in its lifetime. We have to be out there to see it. And when we're looking at um, corn ears, the other piece at this part of the plant is the ear leaf. So that's the leaf attached to the node where that ear is developing. We talk a lot about fungicide to keep the plant healthy and what we're really talking about is keeping this ear leaf healthy. This leaf will supply 60 to 70 percent of the nutrients for this ear to develop um, and keeping it healthy really can impact things like kernel depth late into the season. So working our way up the corn plant, we'll, we'll continue to see um, leaves put on during vegetative growth stages. Typically a corn plant has 16 to 17 leaves. At the top of course we find our tassel, the male flower. Um, so as this tassel opens up, it's going to release pollen, obviously to pollinate the female flower that you're down here. Um, one thing we have seen this year is if we have extreme heat during this process or drought, we can see spotty pollination. How do you tell if your ear has been spotty pollinated? You'll see kind of kernels in weird patterns throughout the, the length and width of it. Um, it'll be at the base, at the top, kind of in, in random places. So I've seen a little bit about that, especially in early, earlier planted corn, but this plot here was planted pretty late um, and missed the heat in terms of catching that knot at the, that pollination time frame, and things are looking pretty good. Dan, what about this black stuff that I see inside the ear or the leaf sheath above the ear? What's right. that? So this gets a little confusing. This, all this is, is pollen that has gone down here and molded. Um, there are there are some stock diseases like Physoderma brown spot um, that we can see um, in certain hybrids, especially late season but that will be actually on the stock itself. So this stuff that's just in kind of the base of these leaves here, all that is is moldy pollen. Thanks for watching.